Hi, welcome to BCTV Open Studio. Today we're going to be talking about the Putney Craft Tour. This is the 38th, 38th Putney Craft Tour, uh, which is being celebrated on Thanksgiving weekend, which it has been for so many years. Um, and today we have Fiona Morehouse, who is a new participant in the Putney Craft Tour, mm -hmm. and Ryan Birch, who's also a new participant, and his father, Bob Birch. So why don't we start with you, Fiona? How, what got you interested in uh, participating in the Putney Craft Tour? Um, well, connecting into the community and recognizing one of the special aspects of this area is that it has this concentration of creative um, people mm -hmm. and loving the idea of providing the opportunity for people to step into your own creative space. I feel like that's a big part of the art that can be a missing piece when you walk into a gallery or um, you don't have the opportunity to interact with the artist mm -hmm. and really feel the energy of their working creating space. Did you just move to Putney or have you been a long-term no, this is just our third year in Vermont. Aha, uh -huh. where did you come from? From Oregon. Oh dear, what brought you to Vermont <laughs> and to Putney, can I ask quickly? <laughs> um, I think it was one of those opportunities that, you know, you it's almost hindsight. You have to look back and go, oh, that's why we moved here, because um, there's been so many wonderful gifts. Um, but it was okay. a, a job move, uh -huh. was the initial draw. But we've spent a lot of time in New England, so. Very good. In some ways it's like home. And Ryan, I think I know why you're here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, you're only 23 years old, as I, I understand. Yeah. And um, you are not doing glass blowing, from what I see, mm -hmm. but you are doing ceramics. So how did that happen in your family? Um, so I, I kind of grew up with his glass blowing studio in right. my backyard. Right. Um, and I, I was always, I loved working with my hands growing up and making things and um, drawing, but um, I think the glass blowing aspect just, I, I was always fascinated by it, but it just became, it was just always there mm -hmm. in a sense. Um, so I, I kind of shifted in my own direction. Um, I discovered clay in high school um, and then kind of got really wrapped up in that, and um, it's what I studied in college, too, and then... Um, oh, that's great. Yeah, moved back to the area, and I'm still still working in clay, so... And do you have your own studio, or are you...? Um, so I, um, I'm a part-time pottery teacher for um, a high school up in Saxons River, and... Um, Which one? Vermont Academy. Okay. And so I... Um, I have a studio up there where I make my work, but um, my dad and I will actually be um, selling and demoing out of his studio in Putney for okay. the tour this year. Okay, great. Yeah. And Bob, you always have a big crowd at your studio because of your demonstrating. Not everybody does demonstrate on the tour, um, but you certainly do. And what do you have new for us this year? Um, we've got a lot of, well, not a lot, but uh, some new colors, some new forms. Um, we're doing some landscape pieces, kind of like painting in molten glass, Ooh. which has... Is uh, that any of that? No, I didn't bring one of those. Okay. They're, they're smaller pieces, but they have crescent moons and mountains and... Oh, beautiful. ...things in them, and uh, yeah, we've been doing very well with those. Uh, and I'll be, yeah, I'll be demo demoing a lot. We'll do... Um, these things like these platters are really fun to watch because they, um, at one point, they look like a uh, something swimming in the ocean, okay? Mm -hmm. And it, because they're moving around and they're very molten and soft, and uh, I really love the interaction with the people mm -hmm. um, that come into the shop. So uh, we'll be demonstrating uh, most of the time. And out of the 22 people on the craft tour, I think 16 are gonna be demonstrating too. So, oh, I didn't uh, know that, that's good. So there'll that's be a lot of potential um, learning experiences. That's great, are you all gonna be doing any demonstrating? Will you be at all? My plan is to keep it open and sort of fluid. The opportunity will definitely be there, but because it's my first year, I'm not exactly sure how it's going to all unfold. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. my hope is, and my hope would be to actually help other people 
um, be able to work on the wheel and just experience or hand build work oh, on the Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. So people could try it out. Mm -hmm. That's terrific because people love to get, you know, they love to get involved. Yeah. Um, we should say there are 22 artists on the tour um, and four new artists this year. and We have two of them right here. We also have Jesse Fox, who is a um, bicycle, custom bicycle maker, as well as Rodrigo, who actually is a, as I understand it, a painter and a furniture maker. Um, and he does something called the Putney Chair, which was originally created for the Putney School as a fundraiser. Oh, and he continues to carry that um, and trying to figure out new designs for the Putney Chair. Um, we also, I mean, it's a huge arts weekend um, because we have uh, the local restaurants are creating Putney specials, Putney craft tour specials, and Sandglass Theater uh, is doing two performances, as well as Next Stage Arts has Main Street Arts coming over to do Rosencrantz and Gild Guildenstern. So it's a huge weekend for the arts in Putney. Um, and so have you actually been on a Putney Craft Tour experience yourself? Yes. You have? Yes. Well, what did you think? Um, well, living in Vermont and doing the tour, I think it might be a little bit different than a visitor coming um, because I think it's the whole experience, you know, just the, the spaces between the studios. Um, and I think that it's really unique that in such a... I don't know, are, would you describe us as a rural community? Yes. Definitely, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, that you have such uniqueness from place to place um, and so much personality. Um, and there's a level of authenticity, I feel like, with artisans in, in our area in particular that's really refreshing. Um, so I feel like it's very open and comfortable um, and a great opportunity in a very short amount of time to experience a very broad spectrum of um, food and craft and fine art. Mm -hmm. That's great. Another uh, part of the, uh, if, if you're doing any Christmas shopping, you can actually go into the studios, see a piece made sometimes, or you know, find one right at the shop so you, the piece has a history mm. um, and can make it a little more special. and. Uh, yeah, and you can probably get a good deal if you, uh, <laughs> you know. But uh, yeah, it adds it adds a lot to the a piece if you can tell someone where it was made and you actually met the artist or actually saw it made. So, uh, right. and once in a while, I'll have people actually help me make a piece of glass. We'll uh, I've seen sit them that. down at the bench and uh, play with glass a little bit and have a good time with it. But uh, yeah, it's it's just a good time. Yes, it is. And usually we get anywhere from. I don't know, 3,000 people perhaps. I mean, people come to the tour. A lot of people are visiting family here in Vermont mm -hmm. and they're coming from outside. And so it's a great thing to do um, with, with family because mm -hmm. all ages, it's great for all mm -hmm. ages. And, and you can go around, as you say, half the fun is going, finding the different right. studios, mm -hmm. even though it's very, you know, we've got <laughs> signs all over the place. <laughs> But just going on some of the some of the roads mm -hmm. and finding your way, and then all of a sudden you arrive, and it's like a whole new world. Um, so that's I think that people like that. One of the other things that we're doing this year is we're going to start a photo contest, and Ryan, you are getting involved in that, and you can tell us all the details. All right. So this um, it's our second year doing the photo contest. Yeah. This year is going to be um, slightly different. It will be um, primarily hosted on Instagram, mm -hmm. which um, for those who aren't Instagram savvy, don't let that scare you away. Um, so we are asking that people, as they go around the tour to the 22 different sites, um, they take pictures of pieces that they like or demonstrations that they're really interested in. And then um, if they do use Instagram, they post them on Instagram with um, the hashtag Putney Craft Tour Photo Contest. Or um, the alternative is if you take your picture with a camera, um, you can also email that image in for submission. And we will, um, after the tour, we will get together and we will pick an image. And um, the winning 
submission will get um, a $50 gift certificate to the studio of their choice. Um, so it's a fun little um, contest. Well, it's another way to get people involved yeah, in, yeah. in craft and, and, you know, are we doing selfies or we're just doing whatever? Um, you could potentially potentially do a <laughs> selfie. I'm not sure how successful it would be in the contest, but um, um, yeah, we mostly we had in mind um, shots from inside studios mm -hmm. of, of mm -hmm. artists working. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot yeah. of times people come with their friends mm -hmm. so that they could get their friends in the, you know, doing something, perhaps demonstrating in your studio or yeah. trying something out, that sort of thing. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see it, it, it should be fun. It's yeah. kind of a... Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about craft and in America and craft here in Vermont. Um, how is it doing? How are things doing in craft these days? I'm finding that it's doing uh, really well. Um, during the recession, I think our business slowed down. Um, probably about eight years ago, it slowed down a little bit and cut into... We do a lot of wholesale, so it cut into our... Um, business, but it's rebounded uh, a lot, and I find that um, we're getting a lot of requests for special one-of-a-kind commission work. Um, I've got probably four or five projects going on, Every, everything from a uh, 1750s French uh, clock to a uh, tornado made out of glass for uh, a gift for somebody that's retiring out in uh, Chicago, so it's wow. a lot of different things, but I find the uh, Craft business has uh, really rebounded a lot and uh, helped put my kids through college. That's great. Yeah. That's terrific. Yeah. Yeah. And you should talk about your sister. Oh yeah. Um, so, Caitlin. Caitlin is my um, is my sister, um, his daughter, and right. she is a jeweler. Uh, she lives what, like two miles up the road from mm -hmm. us. A jeweler and a glass blower. And a, and glass, a glass blower, blower as well. Yes. Um, <clears throat> and so she has been doing the tour for a number of years. I'm the kind of the last one in the family to get on board. Um, but yeah, she's, she's been making incredible work and um, she just had um, her third child. So there's a lot going on and she's still been finding time to get to the studio, but. Um, so that's, I mean, you all must be busy getting ready. Mm -hmm. and, and let's talk a little bit about what you have to do. What are you gonna do in your new, your first time here? Mm, um, well, I feel like I'm a little extra busy this season. We just went through a major studio renovation of the Clay Studio. Um, so as many of you know, when you get into a project like that, you have a time frame, and you really think this time it's going to follow that particular mm -hmm. time frame, but um, it's taken a lot more energy. So I'm spending a lot of hours now, um, which is great because I feel like because this is an annual thing, it creates a lot of freshness, you know, like from year to year, you're mm -hmm. making fresh work mm -hmm. and inspired mm -hmm. by where you are and what's happening in your life and how you relate to your medium, I feel like is always shifting and changing a little bit. So it's great that this, again, is the 38th year of the Putney Craft Tour. And I can imagine people who have been coming to you year after year. Um, and for people who are new on the tour, that those relationships um, those connections build and deepen they every do, year. From what I've heard, yes. Yeah. yeah. So even just me and my relationship with my studio space, while it's new, it's been lovely to really just immerse deeply in the space and mm -hmm. be making a lot of work um, and building that relationship. Why don't you show us this piece that you have here and tell us a little bit about it? Um, <laughs> this is a knitting bowl. I started making these actually um, when I moved here to Vermont, but this sort of, I chose it because it sort of reflects um, my general approach because I um, feel like my work is a nice um, unifying balance of contrast. So I'll throw pieces on the wheel, um, but then I hand manipulate everything. So I feel like um, the textures are very organic, um, but the process is sort of contrasted between these very clean lines and clean process mm -hmm. and sort of methodical process that comes with the wheel mm -hmm. that allows you to really sink into that clear space. Um, and then hand building for me is much more playful and curious and uh, more exploratory. So I love that each piece has both of those differing mm -hmm. facets mm -hmm. in it. Um, 
And I have been I was really looking drawn at, yeah, yes, I love this. to sewing this is great. in the clay, yeah. at least for the knitting bowl. So I have a whole series where they're like this. This one's a little more simple in its form. Some of them are more complex. Um, but I love the incorporation of the, that medium into it. That's great. Yeah. And tell us about your, the piece you brought here and your style. Um, so this is a garlic jar that I made a a little while ago. Um, so just a mm -hmm. your basic storage jar for um, cloves of garlic. Um, so we, I grew up um, in a house that had pretty much everything in, in our kitchen is handmade, um, whether it's my dad's work or work that he's traded for. Um, and just that, that value, like we said earlier, of um, being able to put a face to a, mm -hmm. a piece that mm -hmm. you use mm -hmm. and um, that has this function in your daily life, I think has like endless value. Um, so this, this is just kind of my way of, um, I guess, expressing that value system that I have for um, handmade things and kind of intimate uh, interaction. Um, so I, I love functional pots. Okay, um, yeah. And yeah. I love put, like putting them out into the world. That's that's definitely and mine. And so you will be getting your own studio, or how will you sell your work? Uh, so we will be we'll be sharing his okay. um, studio space. So mm -hmm. we'll both will um, both have work for sale there. We'll be um, alternating demos, so you can okay. come Great. watch glass blowing for half an hour, an hour, and then it will Give switch you a over. Give break. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I I think we're still. Um, you know, he always has such a has large a big, crowd yes, come through. So we're, we're working out the details. But we, we'll both be selling work out of um, his shop, okay. and um, there will be demos there okay. as well. And then just normally, how would you sell your work? Uh, so I have a website, um, okay. and I, I just, um, I was out in Colorado for the past year. Um, I was kind of synced up with a gallery out there where I was selling work. Right. Um, right. So mo mostly on my website, though. That's my, my go-to. Mm -hmm. um, but that, like we said earlier, the craft tour is really a great alternative to that, where you can come and um, put a face to the, the piece and kind of make that connection. Yeah, so. yeah. And people do come back uh, year after year, mm -hmm. and they bring their friends. Um, you must have some stories about people mm -hmm. coming back. Yeah, we, we've actually uh, uh, made quite a few friends over the years that uh, we've stayed in touch with and um, yeah it's been uh, an experience not only for the craft tour but also teaching uh, will um, yeah so it, it's it's a fairly broad spectrum of people I teach too I teach at the shop um, but I don't do organized classes I do usually one-on-one -on -one or one on two people in terms of uh, uh, teaching because I don't like the structure. I like the mm -hmm. ease and the interaction because glass blowing is fairly intense. So you have to uh, hopefully prevent people from burning themselves. Uh, and we've done a fairly good job so far. <laughs> <laughs> but I, um, and we also, I teach anywhere. I've taught uh, kids as young as about seven. Mm. and had to watch them like a hawk. And mm -hmm. then I have um, a really good friend of mine that's been blowing glass at uh, the studio for uh, about six years. She's, uh, I think, a little over 80. And, really? And uh, she's doing some beautiful work. Um, so now the, how did uh, she connect with you? How did that happen? Uh, she actually brought her grandson to blow glass. And then she, she, I think we did two classes. And at the end, and she said, you know, uh, can I can I try this sometime? And I said, <laughs> I'd love it. And so she started blowing glass. She comes once a week, uh -huh. and we did a show for her at the uh, the library down in the center of town. And 50 people showed up, and uh, wow. it was amazing. They stayed for like three hours. We had a videotape of her working, and uh, it was it was a real joy. So, uh, but yeah, if you want to try blowing glass, you know. <laughs> We love to teach, so. Uh, and how long does it take you, you know, to get started and really be able to do, produce something that's you want to keep? The Italians say that it takes 20 years to master glass blowing. Mm -hmm. uh, to get to the point where you can 
say make a glass or something, probably anywhere from two days to 20 years. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it can be difficult, it can be challenging. It's like you're blowing molten bubbles and yeah. that, that's what you're doing. Yeah. And they have a tendency to go different directions sometimes. So uh, totally depends on the person, but for, for the most part, you can probably do something in a couple of weeks. So what are the skills you need that you would? To blow glass? Yes. You have to be extremely intelligent. <laughs> um, <laughs> now you need to um, kind of be able to uh, work and uh, think about what you're doing while you're doing it. You have to kind of split your... Concentrate. Yeah, uh, multitasking was mm. a, would be a good word. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it just, um, it's a very demanding, uh, and it's hot. You have to be able to put it's up hot. with a it does lot get of hot, heat yes. and some pain periodically, and then you're, if you're not burning yourself, you're cutting yourself. So uh, it's, <laughs> uh, you have to kind of dance lightly, and it is a dance, it really, um, is a lot of movement because the glass is moving and it has mm -hmm. a rhythm to it mm -hmm. and the hotter it gets the faster the rhythm and then you have to move around the shop quite a bit so you're kind of it, it really is a dance and uh, I, I love it dearly I've, I've it's, still it's obvious when you go to your studio and you demonstrate and you have all these people around you and you're walking around and you're holding this you know this hot glass mm -hmm. and and you're but you're still very much in control but you're constantly talking and so you're doing a number of things all at the same time. It's quite amazing, Bob. It can be sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and now you sell your work all over the world? Uh, yeah, we have, uh, right now we used to have more galleries, uh, but we have about 50 galleries in the, uh, mainly in the U.S. right now, uh, kind of focused on New England and uh, we do a lot of uh, awards and one-of-a-kind pieces mm -hmm. like that. We've mm -hmm. been doing the Governor's Award for the state of Vermont forever for oh, like that's 20 years. Up next week. Yeah, so we, we, shipped that, we shipped that out uh, about three or four weeks ago. So uh, yeah, we do uh, the Highland Games Award over in New Hampshire. Um, We've done, uh, yeah, a lot of different and different things And you might like even that. be doing some glasses here for BCTV. I think so. I think I, <laughs> I mean, think I think we uh, can do better than this. <laughs> okay, okay. We'll talk about a special deal, okay? Yeah, okay, we'll definitely do that. Um, well, let's get back a little bit. So I, I just a few little um, pieces of information here that the Putney Craft Tour is a top 10 winter event, thanks to the Vermont Chamber of Commerce. It's also... Uh, part of the Year of Arts event by the Vermont Arts Council. Uh, and if people are coming, they can actually go to the Gleanery in downtown, uh, downtown, in, in Putney, and pick up maps, and they're wonderful maps. You can also go to the website, putneycrafts.com, but you can see we have these great maps, which actually um, show all the different kinds of art that we have, crafts. And here's the map. Um, there are also, and I think you're going to be putting out um, the signs so mm -hmm. that people can find the different studios. And I think all the studios are within about 12 miles of each other. Um, and of course, there are the local restaurants giving special Putney Craft Tour specials. And uh, then stay for the weekend because there are wonderful stage shows. Uh, next stage is, is doing thanks to Main Street Arts, Rosencrantz and Gilderstern are dead, and Sandglass Theater uh, is doing autumn portraits side by side with Eric Bass and Shoshana, his daughter. So it's kind of keeping it all in the family a little bit mm -hmm. here. Um, so it's a wonderful, wonderful, and I've been on the tour almost every year I've been here, uh, and I take pictures and, and enjoy it as much as I can. So it's a wonderful opportunity to really uh, you know, everyone's talking about Black Sunday and Black Friday and, mm. you know, this is something so much more special and, you know, one of a kind items that do have history and you can talk about that and, and it's, it's a much m nicer way, I think, to give gifts and you get to talk to the artists and you get to, you know, see how the work is done and maybe even you'll take a, a class yourself, who knows, mm -hmm. right? if you wanted to teach somebody again. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think let's each one of you 
uh, say something about the craft tour and what you're looking forward to. Mm. Uh, well, just hearing you speak, it reminded me of well, just that idea of Black Friday. I'm just seeing like mass amounts of people going into stores and they're buying these things that, um, in my opinion, are sort of void of life. And that um, when you have this kind of experience or you're purchasing gifts for yourself, for others in this way, that all of this work or the food um, carries an aliveness with it. So even after your experience, if you come in and you've met the artists and you've connected with them and connected with their work, if you give that gift to someone else, it's still extending its life that way. So when you were speaking to history earlier, I feel like that's what's really one of the most powerful, unique aspects of open studio tours in general, but um, this tour is that you have such a broad spectrum of beautiful artistic pieces and interesting people and all of that energy carries forward in the work. Great, Ryan. Um, I, I'm very excited to um, be working alongside my dad for the first time. Um, there's always so much energy in his studio and um, I'm just excited to be a part of it and um, I think the having two mediums in one studio will be, That's, be an be experience. That's exciting. So, yeah. um, and I, I would also say um, I'm hoping to at the end of the tour each day maybe do a few uh, go to a few studios myself. Um, I think this year in particular, just the variety of artists that we have, um, the like a the bike maker and cheese maker and the winery and jewelers and it's it's really incredible. Um, so I, I'm I'm looking forward to that as well. Great. And Bob. Uh, mainly for me, I think it's become kind of a family affair with um, my son and daughter. Uh, on the tour, and that's really been a joy for me. Um, this year we're gonna try something new. If the weather's good, we're going to uh, light a fire so people can take a break and have some apple cider out by outside and oh, just, uh, you know. Keep them around. Let, well, yeah, <laughs> but they, if you do the tour, you have to kind of keep moving if you try to do it in one day, but uh, a lot of people come up and do it and uh, take several days to do all the stops, so. Uh, but it's just looking forward to seeing the people and uh, making a little money to pay some bills. And uh, yeah, it's just uh, a good time to say the least. Well, that's great. Well, I just want to remind everybody the Putney Craft Tour is Thanksgiving weekend, November 25, 26, 27. It goes from 10 o'clock in the morning till five o'clock in the afternoon. And please come on down. Mm -hmm.